So I had a buddy come to me uh, wanting to get back into PC gaming after being out of it for a while. Uh, I didn't have any spare parts at the time, so I ended up directing him to a sale on Facebook. The guy was asking 200 for an i7 machine, i7-2600, 8 gigs of RAM, 1 terabyte hard drive, and like some old AMD graphics card, uh, this one of the 6000 series. I told him to ask the guy to take the graphics card out because I could sell him one that was much better for a similar cost uh, if he could get the guy to come down a little bit. The guy took 50 bucks off for about a $20 card, so I was cool with that. Um, my suspicion though is also he also took out the power supply that went with it because when he got the computer, the power supply was this weak stock like Dell power supply with no six pin connectors, nothing that could have supported that graphics card. So um, I just assumed that he took that out. So I was telling him that he's going to need to buy a new power supply to power one of the graphics cards I was going to give him. Um, and that I would have to modify the case to fit it because it was it was such a tiny case and uh, Well, basically you guys can see the rest and then we'll come back and talk more about it So this build had really three things that went wrong, but was still kind of a fun challenge. The first one is the power supply, of course. The second one, modifying the case to fit a longer graphics card. And the third, and this was unexpected, was the motherboard. This motherboard to be exact. It is the IPISBCU. This motherboard does not support many graphics cards. It may have a PCIe slot, and even if you have a power supply powerful enough to power those cards, this will not take the video feed from those cards. It just fails to boot every time. But if you put some kind of OEM AMD card on it or an OEM NVIDIA card that was sold with these models, it works just fine. 
I put the GT240 or 440 I have on it and it worked just fine. So that was another issue is he couldn't really get any decent graphics cards because of this motherboard. So I actually went and not only was I able to save him money on the power supply because I was I went to the scrapyard here in town. I was able to find a power supply or two power supplies. I tested them both thoroughly before putting them in his build. Uh, the one I went with is a higher power one that could support the graphics card. And then the other thing I found after finding out this motherboard would not support graphics cards is I've got really lucky and somebody had just dropped off a computer with a Dell motherboard that was the same socket and would support the graphics card. I ended up picking that up. I picked up two power supplies and that motherboard for $2 and was able to put it all in and save the build. Now let's get on to the benchmarks and you guys can tell me what you think. Now the reason I'm doing this video is one because it just kind of fell in my lap with my buddy really wanting to get the computer built. I thought it'd be a good video idea. But also because I posted a photo of the computer partially away done, like partially done, onto a Facebook group called PC Master Race because I thought like, you know, people cool to talk to about building computers. Well, that wasn't really the case. What happened is some people understood that what it was, other people were like, a GT770 that can, or a GTX 770 that can't run anything. That's a crappy card. Get rid of it. It's not worth it. Blah blah. Not 1080 or better type of deal. You know those types of people. Well, one guy was particularly an asshole about it, and he ended up deleting his comments. So I can't show you guys. I would have really loved to show you that. Like this card, PUBG won't even load with this card. Rainbow Six Siege can't even run at low settings. You might barely be able to run Fortnite. So I think the benchmark speaks for themselves. We ran Rainbow Six Siege at basically medium to high settings, uh, more high than medium, and we got more than 60 FPS constant. PUBG, same story. I ran it basically on low settings with uh, view distance all the way up, textures on medium, anti-aliasing on low, everything else to very low, and FOV all the way up. And I was getting like up into the hundreds down to about 70-ish, never went below 60. So I think I proved them wrong. So it just goes to show that just because you have older hardware doesn't mean it's crap if you don't have latest and greatest hardware. Don't listen to these people. I probably will not be part of the PC Master Race Facebook page anymore because those types of people are abundant. I'll give it a chance again. If it continues to act that way, I'm probably just gonna find a different forum to talk to people on. But if that's not really your scene, I'd avoid it at all costs. Thanks guys.